So we've now looked at how to calculate the centre of mass for series of discrete particles. But around us, most objects don't comprise of discrete particles. Most objects are made up of a continuous mass distribution, such as this metre ruler here, which has mass distributed all along its length. So how do we calculate the centre of mass of a continuous object? Well, in order to do that, we actually need to use integration. But the principle is exactly the same as for the discrete object. So effectively, what we're doing with our metre ruler to find its centre of mass is breaking it into lots of very short increments. We then treat each of those really short increments as a particle. We can work out the mass of each of those increments. If we have the density of the ruler, then the mass of one little increment with a length dx. We're using dx because it's a very short length. is just dx times the linear density of the ruler. And so what we want to do is just use the same equation that the center of mass is equal to the sum of xi, mi over the total mass, but in the integral form. So this becomes x for the center of mass is equal to 1 over m, where m stands for the total mass, times the integral of x dm, which is telling us by integrating to add the length times the mass of each of these little components. So let's have a look at an example of how we could use that now. So the question is, the linear density of a rod varies along its length. It is described by rho is equal to 2.0 plus 3.0x kilograms per metre. The rod is 1.0 metres long with one end at the origin. Where is the centre of mass of the rod? OK, so in order to work this out, let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's our rod here. We've got one end of the ori at the origin at x equals 0 and the other end at x is equal to 1.0 metres. We've got our equation up here to describe the density of the rod. Now this is a linear density, so sometimes you may see it written as a lambda instead of a rho. But that's just a notation thing. Either one of those is fine. So we've said that x times the for the centre of mass is equal to 1 over m where capital M is the total mass, times the integral of x dm. So what we're going to want to do to our rod is break it into lots of little sections. So let's consider this little blue section here. Now we'll say that this is a distance x along the rod, and it's got length dx. So this distance here is dx, this little one, and this distance from the origin is equal to x. And what we'll need to know to start with is, well, what's dm? What's the mass of this little increment here? So dm, that's just going to be the length of this little increment, dx, times its density. When we multiply the length by the density, we end up with the mass of that section. So we can substitute this in. We've got 1 over m times the integral of x and dm is equal to rho times dx. I have just moved this into here and I've just written them in the opposite order because that's a bit more normal. Okay, so we'll need to solve this, but we also need to find out what this one on m is. And this isn't absolutely trivial. It is a little bit complicated as well. So the m is physically the total mass, which is a little bit hard to calculate because the mass is varying along the length there. So in order to calculate that, what we'll again do is consider each of these little increments. So consider this little blue increment. We know the mass of the little blue increment. It's this dm here, which we've calculated. And if we sum up all those little increments all the way along the rod, then we will end up with the total mass of the rod. So the total mass of the rod is the integral along the length of each of the dm's. So we are going in our case from zero meters to one meter, 
and we've got an expression for dm here. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, and dm is equal to rho dx, and rho was given up the top there in the question, so we can substitute that in. So we're going from 0 to 1, and our rho was 2 plus 3x, and then this is dx. So now we have an integral expression that we can solve. So now we actually have to integrate this. So let's actually integrate this. When we integrate 2, we get 2x. When we integrate 3x, we get 3x squared on 2. And then we've got our limits from 0 to 1. And so this is equal to 2, because that's 2 times 1, plus 3 times 1 squared, which is still 3 on 2. And then minus, when we put 0 in for the x's, we get 0. So this is equal to 3.5 kilograms. So that's the total mass of this rod. So now we've got m, and we can go back up to this expression up here and substitute it. So we've got 1 on m times the integral of x times 2 plus 3x dx. And so this is 1 on m times the integral of 2x plus 3x squared dx. And our limits, we're going from 0 meters to 1 meter. So we're going from this end at 0 meters to this end at 1 meter. So now we can do this integral, and let's substitute in for our m. So we've got 1 over 3.5, and now we're integrating this. The integral of 2x is 2x squared on 2, and the integral of 3x squared is 3x cubed on 3. And our limits are from 0 to 1. That 2 cancels with that, and that 3 cancels with that quite nicely. So we end up with 1 over 3.5 times 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 cubed, which is also 1. And then when we put in 0, both these terms are 0. So we end up with 2 over 3.5, and solving that, we get 0 0.57 meters. So we've now look, um, located our center of mass. Now, once we've done a calculation like this, we should just do a careful logic check. So we know that at this end, it's fairly light, and then at this end, it's getting heavier because it's getting heavier as it goes along the rod. So because the right-hand side of the rod is heavier, we expect the center of mass to be closer to the heavier side, so closer to the right. And this is further to the right than to the left. It's a little bit past our midpoint. So it's around about there at that purple cross on our diagram. So we've looked at one dimensional objects such as this meter ruler. And just to note, you can save yourself some time by looking for symmetry. If an object is completely symmetric, then the center of mass has to be in the middle. So for example, with this meter ruler, which has a fairly constant linear density, the center of mass should be at 50 centimeters. So I can balance it on my finger pretty much at 50 centimeters. So a nice activity to get students to do if you want them to practice calculating centers of mass is to cut out a few objects from wood, flat objects, get them to calculate where they think the center of mass will be, make a little mark on it, and then try balancing it on a point. If it balances where they've made the mark, then they've done the calculation correctly. Okay, so we saw how to calculate the center of mass for one-dimensional continuous objects. For two or three-dimensional continuous objects, we just use exactly the same method, where the x-coordinate for the center of mass is given by 1 over m times x dm. The y-coordinate is given by y center of mass is equal to 1 over m times y dm. And for the z direction, the z of the center of mass is given by 1 over m times z dm. So again, we just consider each of these dimensions separately, and it tells us where in that dimension the center of mass is. And then putting it all together, we've got the total coordinates. Now, the nice thing about centers of mass is that we can assume that what well, we can model the system as having all the mass at that point. So this actually 
allows us to calculate the center of mass of more complicated objects. So let's say that we had a rectangle here and a circle on the end, and we wanted to calculate where the center of mass of that system is. Well, we can start by considering this as two systems with a rectangle and a circle, work out where the center of mass of those two individual systems are, and then put them together to get the center of mass of the composite system. So let's have a look at how we calculate it for this object now. Okay, so just to show you pretty much as complicated as it can get, we've got this composite shape which consists of a rectangle. Let's let it have width w and a length l. And then we've got a circle at the end of the rectangle with some radius r and we will assume a constant surface density sigma for both shapes and the type of question we can ask is how far below the top of the rectangle is the center of mass of the system. So if we have a composite figure like this, we start by finding the center of mass of both of these objects. Okay, and individually, these objects are fairly easy because we've got this rectangle here. For the rectangle, the center of mass has to be in the middle of the rectangle because it's got a constant linear density. So this is half the length, length down. So the center of mass is at, let's call it y because it's a height. y is equal to L on 2, and that's below this point here. So let's just call that minus L on 2, and we'll take y equals 0 here. Now, for the circle down here, our center of mass is right in the center of the circle. This is a distance r, and from here to here is distance L. So the y for the circle, the center of mass is equal to minus we've got the radius plus the length and the negative because it's down below just because of how I've drawn the figure. Okay, so what we're trying to do is find the y for the center of mass. Okay, the x is fairly trivial because these shapes are perfectly symmetric. In the x direction, it's just going to be in the middle. So um, x center of mass um, in the middle. And by that, I mean along the axis, along the axis shown. So it's just for the y one that we need to do our calculation. So we can treat this as two discrete objects now with the, the masses for each of those discrete objects concentrated at their center of mass. So y for center of mass will be equal to the y for the rectangle times the mass of the rectangle plus y for the circle times the mass of the circle over the mass of the rectangle plus the mass of the circle. So the mass of the rectangle plus the mass of the circle is just the total mass of the shape. Okay, and we have calculated yr here. This is it. So this one goes in here. And this one here is yc, so this will go in here. So we just need to calculate their masses, which isn't too bad because we've got the constant linear density. So the mass of the rectangle is just equal to the area of the rectangle times its linear density. And the area is just the width times the length times, and then we times sigma. And the mass for the circle, again, is just the area of the circle times the density of the circle, and so that's equal to pi r squared times the density. Okay, so now let's substitute everything into our formula. So y center of mass is equal to yr, which is w l sigma times, um, sorry, that's mr, times yr, which was minus l on two. And then y for the circle is minus r plus l 
and then the mass for the circle is pi r squared sigma and then we are summing together our, our masses so we've got w l sigma plus pi r squared sigma now you can see that sigma is a common factor in absolutely every single term so we can cancel it out from everywhere and now we've got our expression so we've got the negative just because it's below it and this is equal to wl squared on 2 plus i'm pulling the negative out um, r plus l times pi r squared all over wl plus pi r squared and so that is an expression for the center of mass of this object like this and you can apply this method to any composite object in order to find its center of mass.